Got to say it, the relationship between the press and the White House sucks. Sorry, but that is the truth. Here is a moment that really captures the state of play. Frankly, I think my credibility is probably higher than the media's. And I think that in large part, that's because you guys spend more of your time focused on attacking the president instead of reporting the news. I think that if you spent a little bit more time reporting the news instead of trying to tear me down, you might actually see that we're working hard trying to provide you good information and trying to provide that same good information to the American people. All right. So where are we now? We're frozen over that 2016 Trump Tower meeting. The media can't stop asking about the obvious truth abuse. The White House hasn't given an inch. Well, tonight we have a unique opportunity to get past this moment. The most visible member of the administration outside of the president himself is Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, and she is here. Sarah, it is good to see you. Good to see you. I respect you taking the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks for being in D.C. Well, I came for you. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about this as a positive pivot? Let's take a look at this situation and see if we can get to a place, mutual respect, both sides think credibility counts, and we move forward. What do you say? All right, we'll give it a shot. All right. Where is the sticking point? This meeting matters. You know it does. I understand the reference to counsel. I get it, not just because I'm an attorney, but you don't want to answer for the lawyers. You don't want to answer for an operation that you're not a part of. I get it. But you can answer for what you said. Uh, you don't have to refer to counsel to that. Sekulow's not your lawyer. He's the president's lawyer. You're saying he didn't dictate this. He did what any father would do. That turns out not to be true. You agree with that? Uh, once again, I, I know I answered this question on Monday. I answered it on Tuesday. And I'm going to answer it the same way today, and you're probably not going to like it any more on Wednesday than it sounds like you liked it on Monday or Tuesday. But this is a legal matter, and the appropriate individuals to answer questions on a legal matter are the outside counsel, and I would direct you to them. And frankly, I did direct you to them, and you had them here on your set, and you asked them that question, and I'd refer you back to that statement. I get it. I didn't have them. But I understand what you're saying about CNN. Why is it a legal matter what you said? Uh, again, this is an illegal process, and I would refer you to the appropriate venue to answer questions uh, on a legal back and forth, and that is the president's outside counsel, and that's who you should ask those questions so of. Even if you guys want to talk about questions that have right. to do with White House policy and substantive policy, I'm happy to try to answer those and do the best I can to provide you that information. If you want to talk about things uh, that don't have anything to do with me uh, and that Except are, does, that are right? the venue because of this is what you the said. outside counsel, then that's who should answer those questions. I get it. I get that that's the answer. But you also get that it's unsatisfying. Right. That's that's why we're that's why we're frozen. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I don't understand having to answer the same question over and over and over well, because again. Because you haven't answered it. That's why. And in, expen in, all, in all due respect, answer. it's because you didn't answer it. No, yet. that's not true. I've answered it. You just didn't like the answer. And there's a big difference between the, uh, me not answering be, it and you not liking there, the there answer. There can be. No, fair point. There can be a difference. However, I don't know that there is here because this is about something you said. You could have said this then when people asked you, hey, it's what Sekulo says, is it right? Why didn't you say then it's a matter for counsel? Uh, again, I, I'm not going to get into a back and forth with you. I've addressed it. The, the outside counsel has addressed it. They've answered this question over the last couple of days, and I would refer you back to those comments. Let's look at it a different way. <laughs> Do you wish that the White House had corrected the error between where it started and where it wound up with Sekulo in this letter sooner? I wish that we spent a lot less time focused on things the American people don't care about. I wish we spent a lot less time talking about this witch hunt and that we talked about things that impact everyday Americans. I wish we spent a lot more time talking about the economy. I wish that your network could spend a lot more time today covering uh, a very important piece of legislation that the president signed when he uh, spent a good bit of time this afternoon talking about the importance of Veterans Choice Act that he signed into law today. Uh, and your network didn't even take that. I wish those were the things that we spent time talking we about. Didn't take and the I whole would love VA. to spend well, some look, more time talking we, about we that. We did take Kudlow's uh, whole symposium. A lot of people did not. You have to make choices in this business. But 
Before and I understand if you guys didn't want to put the veterans uh, as the choice that you made, and I think that's a sad you know decision what, you that know CNN that's made. Not what it's about. And I know that that's you something that's, that's important to you, and I think it's sad that we don't spend more time on those topics. You and I have had well, that conversation both on camera and off yes. camera, and it's no different on camera than it is off with me. I think you know that, and that's why I think we should be talking about issues that people care about. Right, but credibility is something that people care about. The yeah, truth I, is what people care about. Nobody thinks except really right now the president and maybe you in this moment that this is a witch hunt. These are real questions. It's a real investigation. We've seen real indictments and lots of different threads to the story. But I understand that spin. The credibility of it matters when something that appears to be a lie, because the idea that the president's lawyer doesn't know what his client's role was in the drafting of that response, it just strains credulity. Common sense tells you that can't be. And how do we know? Because it wasn't. Sekolo changed his story. The letter came out only when exposed. Why wasn't the story changed sooner? Again, that's a question you'd have to ask the outside counsel. I'm not going to have a legal uh, conversation with you here. If you want to talk about issues, uh, again, that matter to the American people, I'm happy to do that. But you really don't uh, think this matters this, to I've the American people? I've answered this question. Uh, multiple times, and I, no matter how many times I answer it for you, it's not going to change. It's the same Look, one. It's so. got to be frustrating for you. I'll try it one other way. It's got to be frustrating for me to answer the same question over and over you know, again. To be put in a position yeah. where you can't answer it. You, you seem to be in a position where you feel that you are constrained to not be able we to answer. We are purposefully walling ourselves off and allowing the outside counsel to do their job, and we're doing ours. But you did initially answer it. Right. I, I did. And again, I you regret that? you. Uh, no, I don't. But I, I'm starting to regret sitting right, here right. because Listen, I've, I've I just answered wanted the to same give you a lot. I wanted to give you a lot of times. chances at it because I think it matters. I think it hurts your credibility. I think it hurts the dynamic. But I gave you the opportunities you made of them what you wanted. All right. Yeah, it's, not I, the, it's not I'm the only reason I brought you. I'm very comfortable with uh, my credibility and the fact that. I think by sitting here right now and taking questions from True. you shows uh, the type of person I am, shows my effort to provide information and, frankly, to be in an environment that's not exactly friendly, that's not exactly uh, one that I think a lot of people in my position would come and sit in. And I think that speaks a lot to my credibility. And if you want to focus on my credibility, I think that's something that you should certainly look at. I started the interview by saying, I respect you taking the opportunity. Let me ask you about something else that winds up becoming like a pattern of this. Um, what the president called Spygate, all right? You've now had a list of people, including the Speaker of the House, Gowdy, Nunes, Burr, uh, say, we looked at the information that is relevant. The FBI did nothing wrong. It's a time for the president to stop saying that the FBI spied on him wrongly. Look, the president's got some real concerns. We know that the FBI certainly participated uh, in a number of things that I think, frankly, the American people are concerned about, not just the president. And we think they should be looked at. And that's what's taking place. Right. But he keeps saying it like it may have happened. And these people from your own party have looked at it and said it didn't happen. The president feels strongly about this and that it should be fully looked at. Um, and I think he's got some real reasons to be concerned. There's no question that there was a lot of foul play that went on in the FBI. We've seen evidence of that. And certainly, I, look, uh, uh, people were fired over the uh, inappropriate actions that they took while they were at the FBI. And certainly the president has a right to be concerned nothing, about that. Nothing connected to what he says, though, about spying. That's why I'm just saying, why don't again, you drop that of, and move there, on to another area again, where the, you don't know I, the facts? Chris, there have been a lot of reports that have caused, uh, that raised a lot of cause for concern. The president's asking that those be looked at. Look, there's been nothing, literally nothing that has come uh, out of the year and a half long witch hunt that you guys have been on, yet everybody wants to spend 
plenty of time focused on that. Well, why do you the keep president is simply it asking that this is, this be looked into I'll, I'll as well. I'll ask you a third time. I don't know why you keep calling it that. Because Bob Mueller is one of the most respected people in your party. Because he's there a decorated is, veteran. There is. Everybody stood up and cheered when he got this job. I'm glad you guys want to mention the veterans now, but you didn't want to cover it well, when Sarah, we were actually why, provided. Look, have you? Have uh, I ever taken a cheap shot at you? Things, why uh, would you say that we don't support the veterans? That's not what I said. I said you. You were the guys who decided not to uh, invite one of the biggest veterans groups who was in favor of the choice bill to the ceremony today, the IAVA, one of the largest populations, just because well, they haven't been as affectionate to the Trump administration. We wouldn't have known that they weren't there based on the coverage by CNN today. No, but I'm saying, look, I think that we have a very strong case to make that we cover veterans' issues as well or not better than anyone. I don't think we need a cheap shot. I ask you the questions, you answer them the way you want. Um, the spying, I laid it out there for why I would think that it's time to let it go when your own people say so. You had a shot at that. Let me ask you about the economy in the first 500 days. That was a priority for you in coming on. What do you believe the case is for the American people as we enter the midterms that if you look at the first 500 days, winning? Absolutely. The economy, without question, is one of, uh, I think, the president's signature moments in the first 500 days. Uh, over three million jobs have been created. Certainly the fact that unemployment is at the lowest that it's been uh, in decades. Multiple people have said that we have the strongest economy that we've had since World War II. We now have more jobs available than we have people looking for them. Uh, no one can argue the fact that the economy is in a better place under this president and under his leadership, in large part due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that he helped uh, orchestrate and get through Congress, and also uh, the massive deregulation and just the environment that he has created for businesses to want to go out, grow their companies, hire people, and not just hire them, but pay them good wages. We are in uh, one of the best moments that we could possibly have economically, and it's a huge success for this president. A couple of questions about the at what cost of the growth. Uh, the tax bill was fundamental, according to the administration and certain economists, for uh, juicing the economy. And I, I, mean, I don't mean that in a cynical way. But it did come at a cost because you have a deficit that we haven't seen in a long, long time. 2017, I think it was $666 billion, the number of the beast. Uh, much up from 2016, which was the last year you weren't responsible for. The estimates go up yep. from there. Trump was so strong on being anti-deficit when he campaigned. Your party is so strong on being anti-deficit. Why balloon it now? Look, the president's working hard. That's one of the reasons that he's so uh, emphatically focused on fixing the trade deficit that we have uh, across the globe. He's making sure that we're protecting American workers and that we're putting more money back into Americans' pockets and that we're not allowing countries to rip us off anymore. The president's the first person in a long time to stand up to countries like China and say, not anymore, not on my watch. We're closing that gap. We're bringing the wealth back into the United States. Look, we've grown $7 trillion, $7 trillion in wealth here in this country under this president. Uh, the deficit wasn't created in a day. It's not going to be fixed in a day. But the president is certainly focused uh, on reducing that. One of the big problems we had is the fact that previous administrations had let our military uh, just drop down. And they had to have a huge surge in military funding and spending to rebuild our military and make sure that the president did his number one job, which is to protect uh, the people across this country. And he did that by making sure our military was fully funded. And he did that by going off of what General Mattis and the folks at DOD said had to be done in order to uh, put our military in the place it needed but to be. But the growth of the economy winds up being countered and mitigated to a certain point by the deficit. And you mentioned... I certainly don't think that you can take away the strength of the economy because of the deficit. Don't get me wrong. That's we, fundamental we wanna, economics. We want to we fix that, and we're, we're doing everything we can. But you can't take away service. the fact that this president has strengthened our economy and made it infinitely better. Ask any economist, ask any individual right. in this country, are they doing better under President Trump or better under President Obama? And I can tell you, based on the economy and the strength and the growth uh, and the breaking down of barriers that this president has provided, they're better off under President Trump. Well, certainly people will say that, and some will not. That's what elections are about. You mentioned tariffs. 
there's an argument to be made that what people may have gotten back in their pocket from the tax cuts may be erased by the higher prices they're going to pay because of these tariffs. What about that? We don't think so. The president is focused on making sure we get good trade deals and not continue to be ripped off by other countries. We have uh, countries like China where we have a $500 billion trade imbalance, and that has to be closed. That the gap problem has is to clear addressed. whether this is the we right can't solution. We continue to ignore the question. it, uh, and the president is focused on fixing the problem, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Thankfully, he's the best negotiator, no, negotiator at the table, and we're very confident in his ability to get the deal that we need to make sure we close those gaps. Just interviewed Chuck Schumer. It'll be on after you. He says that the president is a terrible deal maker, and one of his examples is, look at the economy right now. You have more jobs than you do have people. <laughs> and yet the president said in the immigration negotiation he wanted to cut legal immigration in half. Why would you cut legal immigration if you need more workers? Chuck Schumer is probably the only person in America that could find something wrong with a booming economy that's going on uh, in this country right now. It's but funny. that's a good point look, about look, why you're cutting Schumer's, the workforce. Schumer's been on so many different sides of the issue. He was against the Iran deal until the president became right, the president about this and got one? rid of it. What about this one? I, I, I missed the last part of... Well, I'll the, say it again. Yeah. The idea that you want to cut legal immigration in half when you need more workers... Why would you nope, do that? Nobody here is against legal immigration. The president wants a system that works. He's tired of kicking the can down the road. We want to close loopholes. We want to secure the border. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are good but things. But cutting it in Chuck half Schumer, means you're going to starve yourself Chuck of Schumer workers. should quit playing political games and do his job. He has done nothing. Look, the Democrats no longer have a message. That's why they continue to drop in numbers, and the president continues to go up, because he's actually doing things to help the American people, and he's solving problems. Democrats are going to have to decide at some point, and they should decide it soon, that they hate this president more than they love this country. Because right now, all they do is attack the president. They offer nothing. They have no solutions. And they have no message. And there's a reason that they're not going to do well in November, and that's it. They say they attack the president because they love the country. But again, that's what elections I, are for. I, I can't imagine why attacking a president that has strengthened our economy, built better foreign relations, put national security back on the forefront and made America respected again, made us feared again by and, and friends of our allies. Uh, I, I just I find it right. laughable that Chuck Schumer would find uh, things wrong with the way that the direction of the country is going. Right. right He's now. not alone in that. You got members of your own party who are against you on tariffs and other bills right now. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Let's go back to you. Let's end where we started. Are you enjoying your job? I am. Uh, and even in moments uh, when I come on CNN, uh, because I love our country, I think the president's doing a tremendous job. And we are, I think, moving the ball down the field in a way that it hasn't been done in a long time. And are you OK with how you're doing it? Uh, I, I mean, I think things are going pretty well. Uh, again, I think that the country is moving in the right direction and it's doing that under the president's leadership. And I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that. And I think some really great things have happened over these first 500 days. And I think a lot of great things are going to take place over the next six and a half years. Do you believe that this is sustainable, this dynamic where we come at you with questions about what's true and what isn't, and those questions don't get answered? Do you think that by saying we stink, uh, that I, we don't like veterans, I don't, that we are bad for America, the president says that we're enemies of America, do you think that that works for you long term? Uh, look, what I think is important to remember is that you guys get to ask the questions, uh, but you can't always complain about the answers. You constantly ask the same question over and over and over again. That's the and job. Ex and expect different answers. That's the and job. then get mad when the answers don't change. No, the, the job is to get information and report the news. Unfortunately, you guys quit reporting the news. When I can read a news story and I have no idea what side of the story the reporter is on, that's a good news story. You'll be hard pressed to find a lot of news that looks like that. That assumes in that the story is completely 
even-handed, that one side isn't one more right than other, that something isn't demonstrably true, no, that everything is unknown. The news That's isn't not the opinions. truth. The news That's isn't an opinion. Of course the, the news, news isn't is an opinion. The news is reporting facts and letting other people make the decision That's about right. how they feel about it. And if you won't answer the questions, Sarah, how can people do that? <laughs> I answer questions all day, every day. And if it's they, what I spend every minute of the I day know doing. That's why I'm sitting here at 9 o'clock at night answering questions to you. But you have to understand you, the dynamic on the other side. This is, this is where we'll leave this. Let me tell you what it's like on the other side, okay? I haven't sat here and told you that you hate veterans. Uh, I didn't say that. Yeah, either. sure, you, you did. But, but, you did it but, in a little bit more polite way. But, but the president actually, says Chris, horrible things about how we do the job Chris, all the time, the and then you complain <laughs> about having a critical press. I find it absolutely laughable that you would say to me that you're upset that the president says oh, you I'm guys do upset. a tough job. On I'm this telling you that you're alone, asking for on, scrutiny. On this is what network I'm alone, you. I've been called useless and, and so by many me? other outrageous names. By me? No, I'm just saying in general. But, but I, not by me. You got to teach, take I, each I, as I its hope own. Not. Right? I don't I'm know. not holding you accountable for everything the president says. No, but right? you're you're taking things that I've said completely out of context. The I veteran thing was that. a cheap shot. I know where you were going it, with it. it. I'm just saying shot. it doesn't it a, make it, it a healthy a dynamic. It was it was a fact that you guys did not oh. cover this topic. Uh, we cover veterans it, all the time in a way that I felt like was important today. I brought you on here because you said you wanted to talk about 500 days and we would handle the news a day. Did I keep my word? For the most part. I mean, a lot more on, uh, you know, the back and forth versus the 500 days. It would have gone get, like this but I if get you'd that, answered the but question. But I get that it'd be hard for you to spend a lot of time talking about the president's successes, of which Listen, there are many. Uh, and maybe we'll have a chance to do that again The job, as some you point. know, anytime you want. Let's end it on that. All right. Anytime Good you want to come you. on to address what's important to the American people, you got a spot right beside me. All right. Thanks. Sarah Sanders. Thank